Welcome. In front of me is a Samsung Galaxy S20 Fan Edition, and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this device. So we're going to begin with the screen mode, which will allow you to change the uh, temperature colors of the display. And you do it by going into the settings, display, and then screen screen mode. There we go. And we have the vivid and then the natural. Now, personally, I'm not the biggest fan of the vivid mode. Uh, in certain cases, it looks way too saturated, kind of like it does right here. You can see a huge difference between those two images to the point that vivid looks a little bit too harsh while natural is just well, more natural in my opinion now in other cases it might look a little bit uh, washed out in this case uh, for instance like this uh, or a borealis right here so you can see that with the natural it's just not as vibrant and popping as it is with vivid but then it doesn't really seem too natural honestly so you can change it to natural if you want to, and uh, if you like it, then that's fine. If you don't and you prefer the vivid one, then that's fine too. So moving on to the next one, it's gonna be the uh, edge screen, which is this little panel on the side that you can see, kind of like this faint outline right here. And you can pull that on from there. And you have, uh, well, the first panel, you have just basic apps, which you can also tap right here and have different ones. And you can also open the, them in a pop-up view, right? like so. So uh, pop-up view will also allow you to resize them and open multiple if you want to. Uh, but this panel isn't only limited to just the applications. We can also go to settings, just close the pop-up view right here. And we have things that we can also enable. So there is a bunch that come pre-installed. We have people, which just kind of like a contact smart select tasks weather tools reminders clipboard and also you can tap on the store and basically get a plethora of additional plugins from here as well but keep in mind some of them are paid as you can see the calculator seems to be free but then uh, some kind of multitasking apps which seems to be actually this would be really amazing to have uh, costs uh, about two dollars uh, would appear so there are some more expensive as well so at people pro uh, which gives you kind of like a, a single person with a bunch of different ways you can communicate with them and they have some tasks and there's a plethora of them as you can see and what you do is once you have some you can simply toggle them on and then if you slide it from here you can now basically cycle through these uh, through these tiles so moving on to the next one, it's going to be the navigation buttons and uh, we can change the updated ones at the bottom for something a little bit more modern uh, that accommodates the big screen a little bit better. So we can go to the settings again and then again display and from here let's scroll down to navigation bar and then swipe gestures. So we have swipe up to go home. Um, Open up settings, swipe from the sides to go back as you can see there is this arrow appearing and it opens, I mean it works from both sides and swipe and a hold to go to recent which I think I already did mention. Okay, so just a little bit of a more unique way of navigating through the device and honestly the back gestures are really amazing. Uh, once you get used to, used to it, it works like a charm. Now if you have some kind of problems with using them that it all doesn't always uh, recognize your gestures uh, I do recommend to start the slide gesture off of the screen so as you can see there is basically where, the, where it's lit up that's where the screen begins but you can start sliding off of it and then get onto the screen and in a smooth motion it's gonna glide up and that will ensure that you basically always uh, get the gesture correctly and moving on to the next one, it's going to be the smart pop-up view. I already touched up on the normal pop-up view, which can also be accessed through recent if uh, you didn't know. So when you tap on the icon right here, you have the open and pop-up view. But we also have the section setting for pop-up view, so oh, smart one, I mean. So we can access it from advanced features right here and smart pop-up view. And from here we can enable which app you want to uh, function in this kind of mode. So messages is a really good one. And the way it will work is if you get a notification from 
uh, the app that is enabled so for instance messages if you get a message from someone it picks pops up a banner right here and when you tap on it it will then open up your messages and instead of in this way uh, it will open it up in the pop-up view automatically like so and from here you can quickly respond and if you go home it will actually close it into this app head which you can tap on to interact whenever you want so this will only happen when you get a notifications and you interact uh, so as you've seen it's already enabled in the settings right here uh, but i can still if i normally tap on the application it will open it up in full view instead of the pop-up one so this is only going to open up and pop up if you get some kind of notifications from messages Moving on to the next one, it's going to be the reduced animation and this simply allows you to well, reduce the animations and uh, animations are basically anything like uh, by going into recent you see these tiles kind of slide if you go home it slides them back to left and then brings up apps as you've seen these are fairly quick and the zoom in, uh, closing kind of zooms out uh, but you can shorten them by going into the settings advanced features I believe and reduced animations right here tone down animation effects on the screen such as when apps are opened or closed so this will shorten them a little bit but nothing really significant in certain cases it's barely even noticeable in my opinion so we can take it a little bit further and go into the developer options now I already have it enabled so quickly I'm going to show you how to enable it so you go into about phone software information and then build number you tap on that seven times and for me it's telling me that i'm already a developer but for you it will enable it and then you can find it on the bottom as a last option and then here if you scroll down a little bit past halfway you should find the window animation scale transition animation scale and animation duration scale and each one of them corresponds to different animation you can change it to for instance 0.5 and that will uh, drastically reduce the animation speed as you can see right now it is faster than it was before and if you have some kind of vendetta against the animations you can simply disable them and there should now be no animations as you can see so it's instant switching apart from like certain ones where you see it's still this is technically an animation but doesn't really count uh, because you are it's as quick as you move your finger basically so that's kind of how you could uh, remove animations or shorten them and then moving on to the next option it's gonna be the link to windows so this option uh, allows you to basically link your phone to windows and windows has gotten an update as well i believe recently where it allows you to run uh, apps that are on your phone uh, natively kind of like kind of natively on your computer i haven't really tested it out yet and uh, probably i will make a separate video about it but quickly just to show you uh, this function it can be found again in the uh, advanced and features and uh, link to windows so you enable it and you will have to log in uh, using your microsoft account so you log in uh, on your phone and on your computer and it will give you a basically step-by-step -step guide and on the computer side there is a specific program that comes preloaded to the device um, and what it will allow you to do is have all your messages calls uh, be visible on a computer kind of like a whatsapp link uh, when, when you link it from a phone to a computer uh, but this is a little bit further uh, or a little bit more polished i would say and you can basically write messages and see all your contacts and everything on the computer uh, pick up calls from your computer as well it will use microphone from your computer things like that so you can uh, basically set the phone to the side and have everything visible strictly from a computer now I, like i said i'm not going to really log in and showcase that too far too much i'm just gonna probably record a separate video for just that purpose and moving on to the next option it's gonna be uh, something for the uh, privacy freaks um, so it's gonna be the sensors off option now this is a fairly hidden option uh, it will also require you to have the developer options enabled which uh, if you missed uh, before when i said how to enable you go to about phones software information and build number top on that seven times and once you enable it you can go back to the main settings page and at the bottom you'll have developer options 
And from here, once you open it up, you want to navigate to Quick Setting Developer Tiles and enable the sensors off. And once you enable it, you can then find it right over here in your notification panel as one of the toggles. And once you toggle it, it will basically disable all these sensors, things like your cameras, microphones, uh, gyroscopes, GPSs, everything will be basically disabled. And uh, you can clearly see it if you try to launch camera, it will just kind of crash or show nothing. So as you can see, it's just literally showing nothing. I can try to flip it over. Uh, now it just kind of crashed. And just as an example, if I disable the sensors off, it will run no problem. There we go. If I disable it or enable it, it just crashes the camera and now it's back to black. And uh, I'm not actually sure how it works if someone would call you if you have to disable it or will it somehow function with it. Uh, but yeah, uh, it allows you to basically disable the sensors and it adds a little bit more privacy to your device. And moving on to the last option, it's just going to be a simple application that is installed on here, the Game Launcher. So when you enable it for the first time, let's just uh, agree to it. When you open it up for the first time, it brings up this window right here and allows you to hide games from your home screen and app tray. So honestly, I really like that. And all the games that you have installed on your phone will only be accessible through the Game Launcher itself. Now, unfortunately, I have no games to showcase. Uh, normally they would be visible right here, but because I have none, well, it doesn't hide any apps or games. But I believe I can add them manually. Let me quickly check if that is the case. Um, add apps. Let's see. So it looks like I can't add it. Yeah, it looks like I, I am unable to add apps. Yeah, uh, so that's kind of unfortunate. But normally, if you add an, uh, if you have a game, it will show up in here. And because, for instance, it's going to be hiding the apps, it will not be visible at all in here. And from the app itself, you have also a couple additional things like you can mute notifications, um, sounds. You can connect, I guess, to Discord for some reason. Um, but overally, it enhances the experience of gaming by reducing things like notifications so it will, you can hide them uh, while you're launching a game through this it will not show them and the device will uh, overall uh, basically put all the uh, power to the game that is running to give you the best experience while limiting everything else that is not needed so just a nice built-in application there but this will conclude all the tweaks and tricks i wanted to share and if you found this very helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching